Hey guys, this is John with Hometown Auto. Uh, this is my little shop here. I uh, fix cars for a living and uh, this is what I do every day. So I thought I'd start making videos on what my process is on diagnosing cars. I'm really big on trying not to add unnecessary parts. I spend a whole lot of time on the diagnosis aspect of it because there's nothing I hate worse than a customer spending money and the car's not fixed. And I just, as a technician, don't like that. So I'm really careful about my diagnosis, sometimes maybe a little too careful, it costs me time, but at the end of the day, I want the customer to feel like they got what they paid for. So what we got here is a 2010 Camry, or no, it's a Corolla, I'm sorry, 2010 Corolla. Uh, the customer dropped it off last night and said, when I first start this thing up in the morning, it makes a screeching sound. Of course, you know, first thing I thought is a belt, and that's probably what it is. But after I heard it for a second, I also heard a really growling sound coming from the serpentine belt area. So I suspect there's some bad bearings, maybe on the uh, idler pulley or something like that. So I'm gonna take you all along with me and I'll focus you in and we'll, uh, we'll diagnose it together. How's that sound? Okay, let's start this thing up. What the heck is that? Wow, that was loud. We got something really going on here. Something's getting ready to break in half, sounds like. We're gonna have to take off the serpentine belt and wiggle some pulleys and see what's going on. Let me get y'all moved in here.
looks like I got to take that bolt off. This one hiding back here. And up under the and up under here the shield this whole plastic piece has to come off that won't be bad these are great for popping out little clips little cat claw millimeters the little Milwaukee electric 3 8 ratchet let her fall all right let's look up in here and see what we got I mean, it almost looks like the belt <laughs> looks almost like the belt is not wide enough. Look at that. There's a, a groove there. That looks like a four rib belt and or a four rib setup and they have a three rib belt on it. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, or six ribs. That's one problem. Let's take that belt off and see what the grinding sound is. But someone's at least put the wrong belt on this thing to start with. I don't see a tension. Oh, the belt has seared. Part of the belt's ripped. That's why one of the ribs are missing. And I have to loosen the alternator to get the belt loose. Yay! I should have known that. Oh well. We'll have to drop it back down and loosen up that alternator. I got you all zoomed in the, about the best I can do here. It looks like you got to take this loose, this loose. There's probably a bolt up under here we got to loosen. And uh, it should slip forward or wrench forward. There's a bolt way down here. You can barely see it, it's right under the pulley. It's a 14, and then there's a bolt. I think that's the only one. And then we roll it forward.
These mid-length sockets here are my favorite. They're not deep well, they're not short, they're mid-length. I use these on everything. These are just gear wrench. They've worked fine for me for years. I use them on impacts and everything. I think uh, over maybe the past five years, no, actually I haven't broke any of these. Heard Matco makes them, but makes these gear wrench sockets. But you know, you hear something, and who knows if it's true? Could be. Got to take everything you hear with a grain of salt, I guess. Oh, I'm tightening it, you ding bat. It's our electric ratchet. It's what I bought it for. Time's money. Let's max her out. Now I usually like to draw a little belt diagram, but this one only has a few accessories on it, so it's not a big deal, but I would suggest if it's your first time doing this a job like this to draw one let's see what we got oh yeah that thing is ripped completely down the side this thing is trash i wonder why it ripped did they improperly install it or is there a problem? Let's investigate further. Oh Lord. Look at this. I mean, I gotta focus y'all in on this one. If you look down here, on this pulley here. Let me see if I can, let me get a better light here. Okay, this pulley right here. Look at this. Whoa, what? There's your problem, man. I knew it. I knew something was about to fly off this thing. I mean, that is a horrible pulley. <laughs> and I mean, it looks like it. I don't know if that's part of the water pump, but it looks like it. Let me look in service data just to make sure. It looks like it's going to the water pump, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's see here. Let's type in water pump one handed here. Water pump. Let's go to water pump replace. Remove and replace. Let's see, here's the components. Wow, that looks like it is part of the water pump. I don't know if you can just replace that pulley or not. Hmm. Let's see. Remove number two cylinder head cover. What the heck? Oh, they're just talking about the plastic piece. Calm down, John. Drain the engine coolant. Ain't doing all that. Disconnect cable, blah, blah. 
remove belt, we've already done that. Remove generator assembly, okay. Remove water pump assembly. Remove the water pump gasket from the timing chain cover. Okay, so this thing's getting a water pump. Now we know. All right, so my next step is let's go to the old parts department and let's see what vehicle do I pulled up. Let's put in the correct vehicle. Let's see. Hose, water pump gasket, water pump. Hopefully it comes with the gasket. 60 bucks. Okay, I ordered the serpentine bell and a water pump. So now we are going to take out the alternator and while the parts are coming and hopefully by the time they get here, we'll have it ready to pop in there. Here we go. Okay, we gotta take off. First, anytime you take an alternator off, you always wanna disconnect the negative battery cable. The reason for that is this is a hot wire right here that goes to the alternator and everything on this car that's metal is a ground. So if that touches anything metal, it'll short out and uh, could cause a big problem. I've seen them blow fuses that take hours to figure out. Oh my goodness, I gotta get y'all in on this shot. Look at this. This battery is just a nightmare to figure to get loose. It's corroded so bad. Looks like we're gonna have to pry this this off. I'll loosen this. I'm gonna go ahead and clean these for them, but honestly, from my experience, this terminal here on Toyotas, this one's probably eat up so bad that it's gonna need a new terminal. Um, I may suggest that to the customer, I probably will. I don't want them to think I'm trying to pump them for money, but it's best to tell them, see what they want to do. Okay, so we got that off. Now that I got the negative cable, I can take this off without causing fireworks. This is, this wire goes straight to the alternator. Probably run through a fuse. Maybe, I don't know. And then, Always put the nut back on so I don't lose it. Yeah. Unplug the control to the alternator. Okay. It says remove the alternator, so we'll have to take this bolt off and that bolt down there. Oh, 
remember right, these things are kind of a pain in the butt to slide out. Looks like one, two, three, four, five or six, number 12s. Let me get my drain pan. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's what I suspected. That's what I suspected. I did one day and back these bolts out and get your ratchet stuck. Yeah, you'll only do that once. Maybe twice, but... Whoa! Gotta get my pan position. Floor dry ain't cheap. Another short one. Okay, that's a short one too. So short, short, short. These three are short. Here's the problem. 
Now how in the world is that thing not leaking antifreeze all over the place is what I want to know. Because he didn't complain of a leak and I didn't see one. Well, now we're just waiting on the other parts. I'm going to take some brake clean and clean off all the pulleys real well because you do not want to get antifreeze on your pulleys or your belt. It will squeal and never stop. I mean never. Ask me how I know. These are good to have. You put brake clean in them instead of buying those cans of brake clean. You buy a can, use it one time, it's empty. These you just pressurize the can, you get them off of uh, Amazon. They're like a hundred bucks. I even put penetrating oil in one of them. You can buy a can of penetrating oil. You never do too much of this. Take the little carbine scraper, carbine, carbine, whatever. Well, there's a gasket on there. Gotta get that off, John. No, well, there's not really much on there where it's a rubber gasket. Really, it's just a little bit of crud. I'm not really, I don't really need this. Getting too excited. These are the roll lock gasket cleaners or surface cleaners. There's a well, hold on, I'll show you. The different collars. This is for aluminum head. This is for, um, you're supposed to use the yellow on metal, but on certain things like intake manifolds and exhaust surfaces, I don't mind using that. But on a head gasket, I'd definitely just use the white. And then the green is just strictly for steel or cast iron blocks. These are actually like really expensive if you get the 3M brand. But I found these on Amazon for like 28 bucks for this. And it comes with the uh, little uh, attachments attached to your air drill. Whatever you call it. Alright, let's clean it up. Let's go. Let's go bug them. They're in there eating Cheetos. Hometown Auto Repair. Ashland, Kentucky.
right, our parts are here. They're last. Yep. Wow, he gave us some a gasket, some instructions, some new bolts. I know it takes more than three. Hmm. All right, let's get her put on. It looks like they put some sealant on this from the factory. So I'm gonna clean these up just a hair and we'll do the same. Last thing you want to do is take shortcuts, have a comeback. Too many comebacks and you'll be looking for another job. That's the thing. People these days, they want to hurry up and they don't care. And once it leaves the parking lot, trust me, I've seen it. I've worked in dealerships, aftermarket shops for years now, and I've seen some things that you'd really understand why people don't trust mechanics. But there's a lot of really great mechanics out there. A lot of mechanics that's way better than me. But I think, honestly, a mechanic that cares about his work is a great mechanic. No matter what his ability, I think if he cares, I think it shows. And to me, that's a great mechanic. You know, someone that's gonna go that extra mile, it's gonna do the job right. It might take an extra 20, 30 minutes to get it done right used some official Toyota Fippage when I worked at the dealership. I still have some of this stuff. This is the best sealant I've ever used. Probably just need a little bit. Don't get all crazy with it. If I recall, you're Putting this on the threads helps it seal up better. I remember doing these from a few years ago. It doesn't look like there's any on these. So we're not going to put any sealing on those. Alright. So this thing is really shaped weird. Goes like this. Nobody's perfect, everybody makes mistakes. But honestly, from the mistakes I've made, I've learned my biggest lessons. Bolt A, 19 foot pounds and bolt B, 18 well look at that they're pretty specific 19 on bolt a two bolts 18 foot pounds on bolt b well they're both getting 19. so to do these there's the 
10, you match it up with that line. So when it's on the zero, that'd be exactly five foot pounds because it matches the line and it's on the five. So go up to the 10. So when I'm on zero and the 10, it's exactly 10, zero, 10. And then I need to go to 19, so go to nine. Four, that's 15, 16, 18, 19. So it's right before the 20, 19. from the bottom let me raise the vehicle all right I got her all torqued up new water pumps in Yeah, it looks to be the same length. Okay, I got the belt on. Let's tighten it up.
Okay, let you all look at it. Everything's tight. Good to go. Okay, we're all done. Now, the moment of truth. Let's start it up and see if it makes that horrible sound. Cross your fingers. All right, we did it. We fixed this car. The only thing we got left to do is fill it with coolant. I'll do a vac fill just to show you all how to do it. That's it, you pull vacuum on the system and then we'll be all done and ready to go. So what this does, it pulls a vacuum on the coolant system and then it's, you turn the knob and it sucks the coolant into the system. Something you got to watch out for is not to get air in. Then you'll have an overheating car. System. I like to drive them a little bit, make sure they don't overheat, and uh, that's it. I mean, all you got to do is just take your time, read a little bit if you don't know. I mean, this is a fairly easy job. Most anyone can do it, but 
I found out that sometimes the easiest jobs are not so easy. Sometimes they end up being something really complicated. Um, I'll look up things that are very seem very simple to some people, but I'll find out something new every day. Don't be afraid to get in there and start ripping stuff apart. If you're wanting to be a technician, my advice to you is push yourself. Get into a place to where you have your hands on everything on the car, every machine, and start as early as you can and learn all you can. You're going to make mistakes, that's okay. But the more mistakes you make, the more valuable you become. And I really appreciate you all watching. And uh, the next one will probably be a little more electrical. That's uh, something I like to do. Something a little more in depth. Um, but you never know what comes in the shop, and we'll just learn as we go. Thanks for watching.